Atlanta-based aviation firm Hermius recently took a huge step toward fielding the world's first reusable hypersonic aircraft, at least publicly disclosed one anyway. They took their quarter horse Mark Zero prototype, which they call the Iron Horse, to an airstrip right here in Tennessee a few weeks ago to complete a series of taxi tests. Now, these taxi tests were meant to demonstrate its remote command and control capabilities, to evaluate any radio frequency latency in the controls, or lag, and maybe most importantly, to demonstrate what the aircraft would do if it lost its data link to its control center. Now, these taxi tests aren't as sexy as flying the aircraft around above the airstrip, but this is an essential and one of the last steps before moving on to doing just that. That. Now, Quarter Horse Mark Zero, or the Iron Horse, will not ultimately fly in Hermius's flight tests later this year. Instead, it's a ground-based technology demonstrator meant to demonstrate and refine the aircraft's flight systems. Hermius is already at work building Quarter Horse Mark I. Now, that will be the first aircraft to actually take flight, and it's expected to do so this year. Now, if you're not familiar with Hermius's hypersonic efforts, they're trying to make aircraft that can fly faster than Mach 5 using a unique turbine-based combined cycle propulsion system of their own creation. They've dubbed this engine Chimera. Now, it's powered by a J-85 turbojet, similar to the engines you'd find in an F-5 trainer, followed by a ramjet. Now, ramjets are air-breathing jet engines that don't function well at low speeds and can't function at all at a stop, but come alive at speeds above Mach 3 and can accelerate aircraft all the way up to maybe as high as Mach 6. So by combining a turbojet with a ramjet, Hermius has created a platform that can take off and land from a runway, just like any other aircraft, but can potentially achieve speeds maybe even as high as Mach 6 in the interim. Now, this is not in itself a particularly novel concept. In fact, there are a number of other efforts aiming to do very similar things, including the Air Force Research Lab's Mayhem program, Lockheed Martin's SR-72 effort, and GE Aerospace's recently announced rotating detonation dual-mode ramjet that will ultimately go into a similar turbine-based combined cycle engine. But what separates Hermius from these other, much more expensive efforts is that Hermius is aiming to achieve hypersonic speeds using off-the-shelf technology. In fact, they're going out of their way not to invent anything if they don't have to. I got to visit Hermius's classified facility last year, and while I wasn't able to film or take pictures because of security reasons, I can tell you that their factory floor is littered with 3D printers printing in titanium, and they're using a lot of components that can be found in tactical aircraft in service today. In fact, their next generation Dark Horse hypersonic aircraft will be powered by a very similar turbine-based combined cycle engine. But rather than using a small J-85 turbojet, they're going to use a much larger F-100 turbofan. Now that will allow them to produce an aircraft that is much larger and can carry much heavier payloads while still achieving hypersonic speeds. Now, despite being a startup that was founded by a bunch of guys that are a lot younger than me, Hermius has gotten the attention of some real heavyweights in the aerospace world. They've secured hundreds of millions of dollars in investments from the US Air Force and Raytheon, now known as RTX, all aimed at helping them mature this combined cycle technology. Now, when I spoke to Hermius about these taxi tests and their planned flight tests for later this year, they would not tell me if they expected their aircraft to actually fly under ramjet power during those flight tests. It seems likely to me that the next stage will involve their quarter horse Mark I flying specifically under turbojet power at subsonic speeds, so they can continue to refine the onboard systems. But if all goes well, they will all but certainly push that aircraft up past Mach 2 and toward Mach 3, where they can transition to ramjet power and continue accelerating straight up past Mach 3 and almost certainly beyond the SR-71's standing record as the fastest air-breathing reusable jet in history at right around Mach 3.2. So, if Hermius can push their quarter-horse Mark 1 past Mach 3.2, 
The title is theirs, but they have no intention of stopping there. They already have plans rolling for Quarter Horse Mark 3 and 4, which will continue to push those speed barriers until they can field Dark Horse, with what is likely to be two F-100-based Chimera engines ultimately powering it. And that is the aircraft they intend to deliver to the U.S. Air Force. Now, to be clear, Hermes does still have a long way to go, but it's already been more than a year since they proved that their Chimera engine can transition from turbojet to ramjet power in a high-speed wind tunnel. So all they really need to do now is get that contraption in the air. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to see it.